The best part is no part. This philosophy explains why the landing legs on Starship didn't gain SpaceX's traction, even though they had successfully used them on the Falcon 9. But that may soon change as SpaceX brings the idea of drone ship landings for Starship back to life. Landing on a drone ship with landing legs promises to revolutionize the Starship program. Not only does it reduce reliance on the massive Mechazilla structure, but it also addresses one of SpaceX's biggest challenges, environmental concerns and launch approvals. Join us as we explore how this innovative approach could shape the future and discuss the challenges ahead in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 90,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. With the unprecedented feat of the first ever catch of a super heavy booster of Mechazilla chopsticks in Starship Flight 5, Elon Musk's SpaceX made 2024 one of the most memorable years in space. As a revolutionary rocket catching structure, Mechazilla represents a significant advancement in reusable rocket technology. By catching the booster mid air, SpaceX minimizes wear and tear compared to traditional landing methods, such as splashdowns in the ocean or hard landings on land. This capability allows for quicker refurbishment and reuse of the booster, potentially reducing turnaround time from months to just days and making space travel more accessible and sustainable. However, as SpaceX targets to ramp up the Starship launch cadence in the following years, the dependence on the launch tower will hinder their progress. That's where an additional solution like drone ship landing comes in. The idea has moved to a concrete plan and is now being considered by the FAA under the FAA's Draft Environmental Impact Statement for Starship Operations in Florida, which outlines plans for landing the Super Heavy Booster downrange in the Atlantic Ocean on a drone ship and landing Starship on a drone ship. For the Florida operations, Starship will launch from Launch Complex 39A in Florida. Then, Super Heavy will land on a drone ship in the Gulf of Mexico. And finally, Starship will land on a drone ship in a designated ocean area. The EIS does not specify these locations in detail. However, in another FAA document, the draft tiered environmental assessment for SpaceX Starship at Boca Chica, Texas, there are four potential landing sites. The first area is the Gulf of Mexico. The second is the North Pacific Ocean, with landing zones either between the Hawaiian Islands and the U.S. mainland or west of Hawaii, near the central region of the Pacific Ocean. The South Pacific Ocean offers another potential site, located along the west coast of the South American continent. Finally, the Indian Ocean, where Starship landed on its last flight, provides a vast expanse stretching from the west of Australia to the east of Madagascar. So, why has SpaceX chosen to include water landing in its programs? SpaceX has opted for water landings in its program primarily to enhance payload capacity. By landing downrange rather than returning to a fixed site, the rockets can carry more cargo without using additional fuel. This strategy is particularly crucial for the heavier Super Heavy booster. For the Starship, incorporating a launch and landing platform at sea has always been integral to its design. SpaceX reportedly acquired two oil rigs to convert into floating platforms for Starship operations, which will work alongside the ground-based Mechazilla system. As launch frequencies increase, relying solely on one landing method would be inefficient. Drone ships provide a flexible alternative that enhances the program's adaptability. Drone ship landings offer significant flexibility, since these platforms can be relocated anywhere in the ocean. This mobility is advantageous for Starship's potential point-to-point -point travel across the globe. If Starship can land on a drone ship, it avoids complications associated with landing near densely populated areas like Tokyo or Sydney. Establishing mobile landing ships is more feasible than constructing numerous fixed sites allowing for easier relocation of operations when necessary. Using the Starship as a means of travel to the other side of the planet 
could significantly enhance SpaceX's profitability. Indeed, SpaceX can tap into a lucrative market that not only supports its launch operations, but also aligns with its long-term goals of interplanetary exploration. This dual-use capability, serving both terrestrial travel and deep space missions, could provide a consistent revenue stream that fuels further development and innovation. The biggest constraint SpaceX has had so far is the environmental issues and approval for launches and landing near urban areas. That is just as much an international issue as it is a U.S. issue. Water landings help mitigate these issues by reducing noise and risk at launch sites and reducing problems associated with approvals as the ocean serves as a natural buffer against potential hazards. Additionally, drone ship landings could expand Starship's international reach. For instance, plans may include collaboration with Australia in the Indian Ocean, where Starships could land on drone ships and then be towed for refurbishment fostering international partnerships. Over time, this model could lead to new launch sites in various countries, further extending Starship's global influence. On the other hand, there will be some challenges. The most obvious is the gained mass by adding the landing legs. Due to the huge size, the legs on Starship would be significantly larger and more robust than those on Falcon 9. To handle this issue, they could reduce the weight of the rocket by the size of the landing gear to increase the payload. These legs would also need to fold seamlessly to avoid creating unnecessary bulk during launch and flight. Not only the Starship itself, but the drone ships would also require substantial upgrades. Starship's drone ship would need to be much larger and more durable than those for Falcon 9. It would be very important to increase the durability of the drone ships, since they usually withstand the immense forces generated during landings. For context, Super Heavy's thrust is currently around 7,000 tons, expected to rise to 8,000 tons with version 2 and over 10,000 tons in later iterations. Starship's thrust, meanwhile, could reach up to 2,800 tons in future versions. Even though only a few gimbal engines are used for landing, the structural demands on the drone ship are considerable. In this case, SpaceX could add a dedicated water deluge system. They are also adopting a new type of water deluge system to Falcon 9's sea platform that sprays the deck with water before landing to reduce erosion. Using this system on an offshore platform offers many advantages, such as we can utilize an endless source of seawater. Saltwater would not cause much of a negative impact on the rocket engines, as the heat from the engine's exhaust would distill the salt water and turn it into pure water vapor. Not to mention, presumably engine bells are some stainless variety of steel. So how about you? Do you like the concept of a Starship landing pad at sea? Please comment, yes, in the comment section below. Frankly, many years ago, SpaceX became interested in developing an offshore launch and land pad. In July 2020, the company purchased two deepwater oil rigs from Valeris Public for $3.5 million each, shortly before Valeris filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The acquisition of these rigs, named Phobos and Deimos, was seen as a bargain at the time, intended for conversion into launch and landing platforms for the Starship. However, by February 2023, SpaceX decided to sell the rigs instead of converting them. Gwynne Shotwell, SpaceX's president, explained that the Starship is still in its developmental phase, and its reliability needs to be established through multiple orbital launches before investing in offshore launch platforms. The focus shifted to launching Starship from existing facilities to gain the necessary flight experience. The idea of using floating platforms did not disappear entirely. During the International Astronautical Congress in October 2023, Elon Musk indicated that SpaceX plans to develop a specially designed ocean-going platform for future launches. This reflects the company's ongoing interest in offshore solutions as part of its long-term strategy to support high-frequency launches. While the initial plan to use the oil rigs has been abandoned, 
SpaceX remains committed to exploring sea-based launch options once it has more operational experience with Starship. Landing the Starship on a drone ship equipped with landing legs embodies a daring and visionary strategy for SpaceX's future. This method aligns seamlessly with the company's ambitions to explore and establish a foothold on celestial bodies, like the Moon and Mars. Landing legs are crucial for missions to other worlds, where stable and adaptable landing mechanisms are necessary due to uneven terrains filled with rocks and cracks. Elon Musk highlighted this need in 2023 when he remarked on a SpaceX tweet showcasing the synchronized landing of two Falcon Heavy boosters, stating, and that's how we will land on Mars. This comment not only emphasized the significance of landing legs, but also hinted at SpaceX's broader aspirations. For lunar missions, prototypes of the Starship Human Landing System, HLS, have already demonstrated initial designs for landing legs, featuring both foldable and fixed models. These prototypes illustrate the challenges of tailoring Starship for environments with distinct demands. While specific designs for Martian landing legs remain under wraps, SpaceX is expected to reveal them soon, especially as plans for an uncrewed Starship mission to Mars draw closer within the next two years. Utilizing drone ships with landing legs serves as a vital testing ground for refining these designs. By proving the feasibility and reliability of landing legs on Earth, SpaceX can collect essential data to enhance the technology for use on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Each celestial body presents unique challenges that necessitate ongoing research and development to adapt landing systems effectively. Before reaching these ambitious milestones, SpaceX must tackle the immediate challenges posed by upcoming Starship missions. A robust re-entry system is critical for successful landings, whether utilizing Mechazilla arms or landing legs. The Starship must withstand the extreme heat and stress of re-entry, making its heat shield system one of its most vital components. The protective tiles must operate flawlessly to maintain the spacecraft's structural integrity during this demanding phase. In addition to the heat shield, other crucial systems include navigation aids such as flaps and engines. These components must work reliably and integrate smoothly to guide Starship through its descent. Their performance will be pivotal in determining the success of landing Starship on drone ships and other surfaces. As SpaceX continues to innovate and refine its technology, the prospect of landing Starship on drone ships represents not just a technical challenge, but a significant step towards realizing its vision of interplanetary exploration and colonization. Anyway, nothing is written in stone. To make the idea possible, it will take SpaceX a significant time to research and develop, as well as test it in reality. Despite the many obstacles, it will be better if they are determined to pursue this new plan, demonstrating their ability to adapt quickly to change. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.